In the years following the Civil War, the United States changed dramatically. At the outbreak of the war, the country had been mostly agricultural, although the North was already well on the way toward industrialization. By the early years of the 20th century, however, America had been transformed from a mainly agricultural society to the world's leading industrial nation. Unskilled labor, entrepreneurial energy, and technological talent were necessary to bring about this change. Immigrants from Northern Europe and their children helped to provide all three. The Era of New Immigration The new immigrants came during the period of intense industrial development known as the Gilded Age, as well as the reaction to this growth during the Progressive Era. This period immediately followed the Civil War and extended up until the 1920s. These immigrants came to America from areas that had not traditionally supplied settlers to the U.S. The lands of Southern Europe and Eastern Europe, such as Italy, Russia, Poland, and Greece, as well as Asian locales, such as China and Japan. Why did they come? Immigrants came to America during these eras mostly for economic opportunities. As the United States saw unprecedented industrial growth following the Civil War, an unprecedented demand for labor, mostly cheap and unskilled, also grew. The vast majority of these new immigrants came here seeking work and the dream of going from rags to riches. Some new immigrants such as Russian and Ukrainian Jews came seeking refuge from religious oppression by governments at home. Social reasons. One idea that gave motivation to many immigrants leaving their homelands for America was the social mobility offered by the rags to riches American dream. This popular idea viewed America as a land of opportunity where anyone willing to work hard, save money, and be smart could become rich. These notions were reinforced by the rags to riches stories of Horatio Alger Jr., many of which feature industrious immigrants becoming successful by hard work and perseverance. Economic reasons. By far, the greatest reason for new immigration was for employment. The southern and eastern European nations most new immigrants fled were in dire economic times with high un unemployment and limited opportunity. The stunning growth in U.S. industrial development fueled a seemingly endless demand for workers, which the desperate immigrants willingly fulfilled. The reality of the immigrants' life was far from the roads paved with gold many envisioned. Industrial jobs paid low wages, demanded long hours, and offered no benefits or security. The tenement housing most immigrants could afford in the near-bursting American cities proved crowded, expensive, dangerous, and unsanitary. In the 1850s, swarms of German and Irish Catholic immigrants arrived to the United States in droves. Many Americans felt threatened by the invaders, and so this attitude began to affect the politics of many major cities and states. Nativism spread like wildfire. Nativism was an ideology popular amongst Protestant men of middle and lower middle class who were born in America. They proposed much stricter regulation on immigration and naturalization. Nativism is the idea that the interests of native inhabitants must be protected from those of immigrants. Nativists were often anti-Catholic for fear that Catholics would follow the Pope instead of American government and its people. They were also against Jews because they saw them as threats to American Protestant ideals and institutions. Nativists were okay with immigrants from well-developed civilized countries such as Great Britain and Germany, but were against immigrants from other non-European countries like Japan. The nativists formed the Know Nothing Party, or the American Party, to spread their influence through Congress. The party blamed immigrants for economic, social, and political problems the United States was facing. The party won a string of political victories leading to the end of the Whig Party. In California, native-born workers highly feared that they would lose their jobs to Chinese immigrants that would work for less money. With jobs limited and labor groups pressuring the government to restrict Asian immigration, Congress passed the Chinese Exclusion Act. 
The Chinese Exclusion Act banned entry to all Chinese except students, teachers, merchants, tourists, and government officials. This was extended for 10 years. Then it was extended indefinitely until 1943. During the Gilded Age, about 10 million immigrants came to the United States in what is known as the New Immigration. Some of them were farmers looking for fresh lands, and many of them were poor peasants looking for the American dream in mines, mills, and factories. To accommodate the newcomers, the federal government opened a reception center at Ellis Island near the Statue of Liberty. Immigrants were pulled in to the United States in search for an economic opportunity and were pushed away from their homelands. Asian immigrants were brought in by construction companies for temporary work. The European Americans disliked them for their alien lifestyles and threat of low wages. Labor unions, led by Samuel Gompers, strongly opposed the presence of Chinese labor. They were not allowed to become citizens until 1950. Chinese people were unwelcome in many areas, so they resettled in the Chinatown districts of large cities. In 1924 and 1929, Congress passed the National Origins Act. This act limited the number of immigrants that could enter America to 150,000 per year. The act limited the number of immigrants that could enter America from undesirable groups, such as underdeveloped countries. The foreign-born present went from 13% to 4.3% in 50 years. Melting Pot Theory The Melting Pot theory is a metaphor for a diverse society becoming more similar, the different elements melting together into a pleasant whole with a common culture. This basic idea presents the whole nation as one large pot. Anyone who enters the United States is automatically thrown into the pot, where for the following years, a process of assimilation into the American belief system is taking place. All the cultural aspects that one brings into are blended together or melted to form a new culture. America. The Salad Bowl Theory By the time the metaphor, the salad bowl, became popular to be used as a description of the society of the United States, the variety of different ethnic groups in the modern American society symbolize the ingredients, which reserve their own flavor and texture while bringing together a salad. The salad bowl theory means that the combination of many different cultures of the United States resident combine like a salad as opposed to the more traditional idea of a melting pot. This idea demonstrates a complete separate perspective that the newcomers bring different cultures where each of these cultures is kept as an essential part to make up the whole. Therefore, America is looked at more like a mosaic image. Assimilation Cultural assimilation is the process by which a group's native language and culture are lost under pressure to take in to those of a dominant cultural group. Whether it consists of the salad bowl theory or the melting pot theory, Assimilation has the same basic understanding in American history. Divided only by borders, yet combined basics to a variety of cultures and ethnicities, in time to become one or known as the American way.